Good morning, and welcome to worship today. It is the last Sunday of the church calendar year, which means 2020 ends for the church today. Can it, yeah, let's have a round of applause. 2020 is ending somewhere. <laughs> oh, our new year does begin next week. It's hard to believe that Advent 1 is already upon us um, as we enter into Thanksgiving week. So there are a couple of announcements, and Juliana, I didn't tell you that I was going to do this, but I'd like to share with all of you that Juliana is getting married next weekend. So, yeah. She and her fiancé, Nate, right? Nate, is it Nathan? or Nathaniel, um, are getting married, and we want to keep them all in prayers as they do and share that love that they have. She'll be back with us a week after that, so safe travels and be well. The other announcement I have is you may notice that we have a couple of friends here, and I want you to know that they've been named. Thank you to Carol Oldman's son. She wins because this is good and plenty. Not bad, huh? And if you know anything about the elves, elves love candy, these elves in particular. So there's a lot of good and plenty in their jars because you know what they have to do, right? Just like everybody else has to do when they enter a new place because they've been traveling. They're going into quarantine. So you can see that they won't be with us for a little while. You know, we're going to give them eight days, seven, eight days, but they will be back and they will be in all kinds of mischief. So you will want to check out our Facebook page. You will want to check out our website. And of course, on Sunday mornings, you never know where you're going to find them. And they will be with us until Christmas Eve, because that's how long they will be here. A couple little things. I just want you to know that they do have magic powers, so nobody can touch them. So stay away from the elves. <laughs> so other announcements that I have for you this morning is that we do want to give thanks in this time of Thanksgiving for the many hands and hearts and love that have gone into putting the feeding of 5,000 together this year. The number is something like 4,200, if I remember the last count of people that are being fed. And while we aren't cooking it here, there's a lot of packaging that has gone on here and a lot of hands and a lot of love, like I said, that have gone together to make sure this can happen. And Yesterday we were here volunteering. It was smooth and it was awesome. So what I would like to ask those of you who volunteered, if you don't mind standing up so that we can recognize you and pray. Those of you who are home, I know that we can see you as well. So if you wouldn't mind standing as well so that we can pray for the rest of this to go well. Let's pray. Good and gracious Lord, as we gather there this day, we do give you thanks for through the hands of many of your people far and wide, your people are being fed. And we know, Lord, that that comes for being a faithful people who have experienced your love and that that love continues to surround us even in the midst of COVID. And with the thinking that has gone on and the love that has gone on, we know, Lord, that we celebrate being Christians these days and also being able to serve your people. We pray blessings upon all those gathered here today, and especially those that are in need, Lord. May they continue to draw strength from all the love that surrounds them these days. In your name we pray, amen. And now please clap, yay! And in case you didn't know this, Miss Wendy, I know you're going to stand up too, and I know we can't put the camera on you. Wendy has headed this up this year. So with the help of Art Nicoletti, she's done a fabulous job. So God bless. And Judy. Okay, those are all the announcements that I have. Let us begin to worship. King. 
Please stand as you are able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of God, the word of life. reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, and he will sit on the throne of his glory, all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate, separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. 
And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Well, good morning again. So I am going to ask Greg to put a picture up on the screen. And I really want you to look at the picture and to look at it closely. Now look, now look. Oh, if you can't see it, please turn around. You can see it right there too, sorry. Just look, look, and when you see it, say, I got it. I got it. What did you get? There's what? There's faces? Yeah, there's faces Where? in the background. In the background, the whole thing is nothing but faces. Yeah. Look real close. You can see him. There's one as I'm looking here, right to the right, where it pops up. He just pop. Pardon me? Oh, where's Waldo? <laughs> well, it's not a sea of leaves, as my husband thought. It is his face, just replicated over and over and over again. You can take that down now, Greg. I think it's interesting that when you look at that picture, most of us at the very beginning, didn't see the faces. You had to look really, really hard in order to determine that those were all the same face over and over again. I was so fascinated about it, I did a little bit of research, and this is what I found about people recognizing faces. There is a few people out there that they call super recognizers. And it's a gift. Truly, it is a gift. It's almost like a superpower. The one that I read about, his name is Marty Duerschlag. Now, Marty remembers every face he has ever seen. So when Marty comes upon people, it's not uncommon for him to say, hey, I saw you back in 1922 somewhere. He might not know their name. But when he says that to someone, they're in shock because they can generally remember that they were at that place. Again, it's a superpower. He can use it. He has used it. But that's not the typical, is it? How many of us say, I don't recognize that person from whenever? We have a hard enough time remembering names, right? Let alone faces. So we are called typical recognizers. In other words, we don't really pay attention to the people we encounter. And I have to be quite honest with you, in this day of wearing masks, we don't even recognize the people that we know, i.e. yesterday when I saw you, I didn't recognize you. You know, we just don't have that super power. So when... We come to this gospel today from Matthew 25. I have to admit to you, it just makes me feel really, really uncomfortable because the questions are good questions. When did I see someone who was hungry and didn't help them? Lord, tell me. Well, quite frankly, I have the answer to that. I don't know about you, but this could be true confession morning because when I drive home, almost every time I drive home from here, I encounter those people on street corners that are hungry right? They have the signs up, homeless, three kids, $20, anything will help. And then they write, God bless you underneath it. Has anybody seen those? Okay. Years ago, I was taught, don't give them any money because you don't know where the money's going. Just don't do it. So now this is what I do. I pretend I don't see them because I was taught not to give them any money because I don't know where it's going. It's my choice, though. I just want you to know that it's my choice not to give any money. And then to make it more firm, even more firm in my decision, because how do I know if they're really hungry and they're not going to go use it for somebody else? There is an undercover reporter 
from NBC News a couple days ago who went under Kung. Yeah, so you're all nodding. Yeah, the street corners. Yeah, right around us. And he got dressed up in poor clothes and had the sign and stood on the street corner and waited. And do you know that in two hours' time, he made 80 bucks, $40 an hour, standing on the street corner, because he said the people are just so generous. Now, he was clear that the money was donated to charity. He didn't put it in his pocket, right? But then they moved to, he moved to different corners, and the same thing happened. And, but then he also had an opportunity to talk to some of the other people who were truly panhandling, because that's the word that you use, and he heard their stories. Unemployment hit, kids are living with grandparents, talked about what people say to them when they, they drive up, say, get a job, shout out the door. Yeah, that, that's what happens. So in my skeptical mind, I said, oh, you know, I'm sticking with what I know, and that is don't give money to panhandlers on a corner, give it to the social services, right? So that there is help, and you can send them the right way. Does it make me feel good? Nah, it doesn't make me feel good. But you know, I don't know these people, right? I don't know these people. Then you come to a gospel lesson, like today. So when else have I seen anybody who's hungry or didn't visit somebody in prison? And how do I deal with that? Well, the answer to this is that we can't be specific this morning about what this passage says in the sense of all Jesus said is that when you welcome the least of these into your heart, you welcome me. Now, who are the least? Is it just people standing on a street corner? Is it just people in prison? I don't think so. When I read this this way today, I read a totally different read on it. Who are the least of the people today in our lives? Who are those people who are in need? And how do we respond? How do we recognize their faces? How do we give of ourselves? Who are the least? I had a lot of opportunity to think about that over the course of this week. The least are the people that come here repeating of the 5,000. There's no questions asked about their pedigree or if this is real or any of that. They are clearly in need. And when they arrive here, their smiles, I don't know about anybody else, just my corner where I stood welcoming them, their smiles were genuine. And the love that they shared with us was genuine. Those are the least of God's people. Who else are the least? Well, it's been a tough week because three of the people I love in my life have been exposed to COVID. Four, I'm sorry, four. And one of them is my brother. He's like my best friend. And we're waiting to hear the results. He won't be able to be tested until tomorrow. But I want to tell you that um, as we're waiting for the results, he is immune compromised big time. And so is his wife, and she too has been exposed. And when I think about their exposure and how they were exposed, it was a choice that someone made because they didn't see the people before them. They were exposed by a person who believes it's all a hoax, who believes it's not real, who doesn't think masks are relevant. So they expose my loved ones, and they're up north, by the way. I just want you to tell you, otherwise I wouldn't be here. <laughs> okay, they're up north. And what I did, and I don't know if any of you do this, I have a file I call my angry letter file. And that's where I write a letter. And I never email it or send it. But I get it out. 
And I'd like to share it with you, at least some of it. It says, dear, because I know who the person is, please don't take this personally. But then again, please do. I can't tell you how disappointed I am in your apparent lack of concern for others. At this very moment in the reading and writing of this letter, you may be thinking, what are you talking about, me? I care about people. Really? It's interesting as I sit here in my home, wondering if my brother will come down with COVID-19. You sat down and engaged in a conversation with a group of people, knowingly, without a mask. You were, I am told, the only person in the gathering who wouldn't wear a mask. So, you know, it's his choice. All I can say is, wow, job well done. Job well done. Let's be honest, do you have any idea the number of people you personally have put at risk? If you don't, allow me to share these stats with you. Mind you, they're not governmental statistics. They are very real people. And they are people I love. Not only is he my brother, he's a brother to four more of us. He's an uncle. And he's the favorite uncle I'm telling you right now. He's a father. And he's a friend. And because someone didn't recognize my brother as being a real person, made a choice because it's his right not to wear a mask. It's his right. All I can say, it goes on further that you have a responsibility to others besides yourself. And I do hope that you do not have a rough journey with COVID. And I pray that if my brother and sister-in-law get it, that they don't either. And perhaps that too should be your prayer this evening. And as I told you, I never sent it. And I won't. The point is, when Jesus says, who are the least of these? The least of these are all around us, all over the place. The least of these are God's people. You can look at each other. We are all the least. We are the people that God cares for us. And on Christ the King Sunday, this isn't a lofty God who is way, way up there. This is a God who is with us and promises to be with us through it all. God is here and will be here always, guiding us through the feeding of 5,000. God is on the street corners, my friends, with those people, because I do know I care. I just give my dollars to the social service and agents that can help them better. I wear a mask. I got lots of them all over the place. Not because I like them. I don't. They're uncomfortable. They're not attractive looking, but I care about all of you, which is why we're 26 feet apart from you. I want to play with my little kids here on Sunday mornings. It's killing me not to hug you all. But as Martin Luther has said, and as we're studying the freedom of a Christian, which there was a lot of talk about that this morning, I do want to share with you what Luther says. Many people view Christian faith as something easy and quite a few people even count it as if it were related to the virtues. They do this because they have not judged faith in light of any experience, nor have they tasted its great power. We experience our faith. The wearing of a mask is faith. And this is what the freedom of a Christian is all about. When we identify ourselves as Christian, we are free to not have people lord things over us. But we are also servants of all because we claim the identity as God's children. 
and we recognize God's presence in each and every one of God's people. We are all part of his kingdom. It's an emotional sermon, as you can tell. Please wear your masks. Please wear them for other people so that they may be protected and that we are living out our faith because we are all the least of these and part of God's kingdom. Amen. Sovereign of all, train our ears to hear your cry and the needs of those around us. Bless all social ministries of the church through which we seek to serve others as we ourselves have been served. Hear us, O oh God. You cause rain to fall on the just and unjust alike. Direct our use of creation to provide for the needs of all people in ways that are sustainable for the earth. Hear us, O oh God. Bring peace to every place where conflict rages. Grant opportunities for enriching divisions among us and usher in your reign of unity and reconciliation. Hear us, O oh God. Heal the sinful divisions we erect between us and release us from systems of oppression and prejudice. Restore our capacity to see your image and those whose dignity has been stripped away. Hear us, O God. Pour out the gifts of your spirit on children and youth throughout the church. Sustain teachers and those who work with children. Hear us, O God. Thank you for the saints who have departed, who fed the hungry, clothed the naked, and tended to the sick. Inspire us by their example, that we may see your presence in those in need around us. Hear us, O oh God. 
Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need, through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Please be seated. This is my body given for you. is the way that our Lord has made for all of us. It is a path of freedom and the experience of a Christian. Let us pray together with the words that he has given us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. This is the body of Christ given for you, and this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, our life, our strength, our food, we give you thanks for sustaining us with the body and blood of your Son. By your Holy Spirit, enliven us to be his body in the world, that more and more we will give you praise and serve your earth and its many peoples. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and share the good news boldly, intentionally, and joyfully. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, David. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Thanksgiving. Good morning, happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving, Jody. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Joyce. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, hi, happy hi, Jody. Dolly got up there all of a sudden. Hi, hey, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Blessed Thanksgiving to everyone. Hey, David. Hi, everybody. Where's hi, Linda? Hi, she's Jane. she's in the other room watching it on Facebook. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Mary. Hi, Denise. Hi. Hi, Marianne. Happy Thanksgiving. That was a lovely chat. Thank you.
I believe you. <laughs> Be sure to read the chats. Yes, it was very well said. We are so fortunate and so thankful to have Pastor Carol. Oh, aren't we ever? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. She always gives us something Happy to talk about in our Monday school. Thanksgiving, Joyce. Happy Thanksgiving to you, Jody. Happy Thanksgiving. Safe travels, anybody that's going places. Happy Thanksgiving, Joyce. It's nice.